Galloping Ghosts in a smaller scale. Here's a look at the Numbskull Pac-Man quarter scale replica arcade cabinet. Experience Pac-Man, how it was meant to be played on an arcade machine. This is an official, fully playable, accurate one-quarter scale replica of the original Pac-Man arcade cabinet for you to play or display in your home for the most authentic experience of the classic arcade game available on the market. Before we get a closer look at the quarter scale of Pac-Man, and again, this is a fully playable arcade, I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Numskull who were nice enough to contact me and send this sample my way. If you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself, uh, they actually carry a, a wide range of quarter scale arcades. I'll provide the link down below where you guys can pick one up for yourself. In the meantime, though, according to the tape measure, if you're looking to pick up this one for yourself, and space is a, maybe something that you don't have a commodity for for a full scale, well, the quarter scale Pac-Man Arcade stands 16.6 inches in height. And that in centimeters works out to be 42.3 centimeters tall. If you manage to pick up this one for yourself, the collector's version of the Pac-Man quarter scale arcade is going to come with a bunch of stuff. We're going to have a look at those right now. For starters included, you get this collector's coin featuring the classic board of Pac-Man along with the date and quarter scale arcades down below. This is a stellar looking collector's pin. It's limited to a very limited 10,000 copies worldwide. So if you are again looking to pick this one up for yourself, quantities will be extremely limited. On the back, by the way, you've got quarter scale arcades, collectible coin, numbskull inspiration designed, www.numbskull.com, and then designed by numbskull down below. We open it up, just a quick look at the coin. On one side, you've got numbskull inspiration designed, and on the other side, Pac Man. The coin itself does feel metal, it's a fairly light coin but quite detailed for recreating the board itself. The starting point, one of which we will be looking at when we look at the arcade. We're gonna get this all turned on, don't worry. There's a close up look at the arcade that comes included with it. A really nice addition. Also to come along, you get a certificate of authenticity. Numskull has issued this certificate to authenticate this quarter scale arcades collector's edition of Pac-Man as one of the specially limited series of 10,000 copies. The certificate has the numbered sequence down below out of 10,000 copies, and it comes included with a bag, sealed bag, in which you can actually keep frames or probably just keep it likely back in the box where the rest of the arcade components would have come from. Other components you'll find inside the box is this colorful gloss instruction booklet. The booklet is done in several languages, and uh, the first page happens to be English. Uh, every page is the exact same to one another, so you don't have to read through an entire lengthy book. Not that the book is long in, in the first place. And then on the back, you've got warnings and warranty information, some stuff you'll want to read. The one single standalone page, whatever language you actually will be reading it in, We'll show you how to turn on the unit, the volume settings, and all basically the working components on the back of the unit. How to start the game, and most importantly, how to charge the unit. Some safety information down below, and below that, you've got quarter arcades. Lastly, to get yourself started, they also include a micro USB cable. The charge time is approximately four hours, so I would advise resisting the temptation, I know the temptation was certainly there, to start playing immediately but you will want to charge it for a good four hours, approximately four hours, give or take, and then you can start going from there. I'll go ahead now and show you whereabouts you want to plug that in. So located along the bottom of the cabinet here, you'll have your port for your micro USB cable. You'll have your on switch. You'll just flick that to on. It's actually not one that switches to on and then switches to off. You'll flick it on and flick it off, if that makes any sense. And then over here, you have your volume control. So again, you'll just take your micro USB cable, didn't mean to startle you there, just plug it into the bottom, 
And then you can either plug that into any USB enabled device, such as a computer, or if you have yourself a hub, or if you have the available options, you can certainly get yourself an adapter plug, plug the USB into that, and then plug it into the wall and let it charge approximately for four hours. What's pretty crazy though about this replica is that everything from the artwork, the shape, the wooden shell, and even the buttons are precise replicas. These are made from the exact same materials that they would have made from, of course, the larger units, just shrunk down to size. Before we actually look at the unit in play, I just want to show you some of the stuff that's happening here on the front. All the original vintage artwork of Pac-Man and one of the various blue ghosts that he'll be gobbling up is present here on artwork on both the front as well as primarily all along the side. You've got Pac-Man there also done in the trademark logo, the vibrant yellow and red fully represented here as with the original classic cabinet. Uh, the controls here on the front, you've got the 25 cent slots. They are not accessible in the sense that you can't actually put in small coins, but again, you've got your cool little replicas here and you've got the buttons that will ev eventually start the game. I'll talk about that in a second as well. On the top, you've got the full replica of the joystick, the buttons, even the instructions indicated on the side and the monster point value included what points you'd be awarded if you're able to acquire any one of these during the game. Uh, on the other side, you've got the instructions, as small as they may seem. They are a little on the smaller side, but again, everything is shrunk down to scale, so it fits the appropriate scale of the cabinet that you have in your hand here. The game is played on a 5-inch TFT screen. Currently, I've got this in a demo mode. This works by simply turning on the back of the cabinet and not starting the game by pressing the button located on the front to insert the coin. If you leave it just as is and you don't touch it, you simply can just have this running in the background if you want to have this on your desk. And it still looks like the arcade, the full experience, without actually playing the game. Serious arcade collectors will also be happy to know too that this plays the original arcade ROM. It's on a custom emulator on a real board, which means it's not playing a MAME. Now that may be not much of a big deal for casual collectors out there. For diehard collectors, however, that want the purest experience of playing the classic game of Pac-Man, you'll be happy to know that it's not playing a MAME. The game is all ready to go and, like I said, we'll continue to run a demo mode until we go ahead and press the button here to insert one of the coins. Postponing, I'm sure, the inevitable doom of this humbled reviewer failing miserably at Pac-Man. Pac-Man was not one of my strongest games, I have to admit. A few points I also want to mention about this cabinet is the fact that it does feature an LED backlit marquee right at the top there. As soon as you switch it on, that marquee will light up and continue to light up even while the game continues to play in demo mode. It's exactly like the original 80s cabinet. One thing though that the 80s cabinet doesn't possess though, that the one quarter scale cabinet does, is that it actually features a built-in lithium battery. And that is one thing that will continue to charge. So again, once you've got it fully charged, you can unplug it and you, like I said, you're ready to play. Uh, I will say though, one thing about the specifics of the game is everything is accurate to the way the original game was. Right down to the fact that they've shrunk everything down in scale. Of course, along with that comes the complications of navigating a smaller joystick. I did find that I had some difficulty. If you look at the game itself, when you're getting down to corners and you have to make sharp turns, I found having a smaller joystick, it was a little bit more difficult to try to pull off. I'm mentioning this well in advance because once we get the game underway, you'll probably see that some difficulty level there is by having everything on a smaller, smaller scale. So postponing things no further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this button right here. It would have been cool if they could have found a way to put it here or here, somewhere where it would have simulated the actual putting in of the coin. Instead, though, the button is located right here. So when you press that, it's going to start the game here. It's going to give you an option of one player or two player game. If you start it with one player, you're going to press start. Now I'm currently just holding this in my hand, so you'll see it's not going to be as easy for me to pull this off with one hand. But you can see, yes, I died rather quickly. 
being that this is also the original game, means that it's also using all the same audio that it would have had in the original game. Let's see if I can at least get myself a power. Again, the only difficulty with all of this is the fact that the joystick does require a little bit of relearning. Because it's smaller, it's a little harder to catch. It's a little harder to, uh, I think, navigate and push the directions in, in a sharp enough fashion before you end up dying. But after playing it enough times, you, you do figure things out. The hardest part, of, again, is just that everything is smaller. It's a lot smaller than it was when you probably played this in the arcade the first go around. To say we're up to our armpits in holiday shopping now, I think would be a bit of an understatement. We're in it now, and while we're in it, people are trying to find a creative gift for that special somebody that already has everything. Socks and sweaters are pretty ho-hum, so people are trying to find creative things that they can give that somebody at Christmas time that are gonna knock those socks right off. Uh, somebody myself, growing up in the 80s, of of course, arcade cabinets were the thing. You visited arcades as not only just a place to play arcades, but just to be part of the environment. While I truthfully didn't play Pac-Man growing up, I was more somebody that navigated around the Ninja Turtles or the X-Men's. I certainly did pass by a Pac-Man in my day, and I could still very much feel it, hear that very familiar sound of Mr. Pac-Man gobbling up those power pellets. So this is really right up my wheelhouse, and very likely I think would be up the wheelhouse of many individuals that grew up in my time period. The vintage cabinets are something that people nowadays are still trying to add in their collection, but space is always a big issue. You maybe don't have the afforded space for a one-to-one -one cabinet, and I get that. I don't have space either for a one-to-one -one arcade cabinet, but this is the next best thing. Quarter scale is really the next logical step down because it gives you enough space that you could put this on a desk, for example, but it doesn't make it too small that you can't actually play the game. I've played enough small arcades to know that half the time you can't even make out what's going on on the screen, let alone actually play the game. I will admit that the joystick on the Pac-Man here is a bit hard to pick up. You're so used to using a larger size joystick that to shrink that down and use it in between your two fingers does become something that you have to quickly learn. And as you saw probably in this review, I didn't learn it too quickly. I'm gonna have to probably go and play this a few more times. But this is such a great, really neat gift idea. Uh, the folks over at Numskull have produced a bunch of quarter scale arcades. Pac-Man just happens to be the one that we were looking at right now in this review, but they've actually produced a whole bunch of them. And if you are interested in picking up one for the holiday season, perhaps for yourself, or for that special somebody that maybe grew up loving the arcades back in the day, these are on average about $150. They're on through various different online markets. I can put a couple of links down below if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself. And there's still available time, I'm sure, that you can order one and get one in for the Christmas season. But I have to admit, time's running out. Time is running out. I'd like to send out also a big thank you to the folks over at Numskull who were nice enough to send this my way. What'd you guys think down below? Let me know down below what you guys think of the Pac-Man quarter scale replica arcade cabinet. It's pretty cool, I have to admit. Uh, also, if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and stay tuned because there's gonna be a whole bunch of videos coming your way uh, throughout the month of December. We'll also probably have a look at some other great gift ideas that you guys can pick up before the holiday season shopping season runs out. I'm personally gonna be staying away from malls myself. I, I, don't, I don't do well with malls. I, no way, I don't do too do, do, do well with the malls. Either way guys, stay tuned, keep your peepers peeled because there's gonna be a whole lot of videos coming your way. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.